Well, on Thursday, European leaders are getting together for a crisis meeting. So what should they be considering? Joining us now is Dr. Dalal Stevens. She's a specialist in refugee and asylum law uh, at uh, the University of Warwick. Uh, thank you for being with us, uh, Dr. Stevens. I mean, there is a basic and very difficult uh, paradox to square that people are prepared to risk their lives to come to Europe yet Europe doesn't want them here. Uh, in policy terms, what could be done about that? Well, I think there are a lot of things that can be done. Obviously, people are very concerned with the humanitarian crisis and at the, in the short term, we need to conduct search and rescue. So I think most people agree with that. But this isn't the first time this has happened. I've been teaching and researching on refugee law for 25 years and there, throughout that time there have been deaths in the Mediterranean. It's just the current scale of it which is obviously extremely alarming. But I think the UMHCR's recent calls for changes are right in that we have to look at a number of aspects to this issue. So not only do we conduct the search and rescue, but we also have to consider uh, greater solidarity amongst European Union states in bearing the responsibility for resettlement of refugees and looking in the medium and longer term to how we can deal with issues within Africa and the African countries as well, uh, considering protection claims there. So there are a number of aspects to this and, and we mustn't forget that a holistic approach will be the best in the long term. But there does seem to be a fairly major disagreement. I was talking to uh, someone from the UNHCR <coughs> yesterday who was saying, well, if this comes to half a million people being absolved uh, within the European Union, we can do that as uh, a union of uh, half a billion people. Against that, as far as we can tell, the political leaders meeting this week are talking about swiftly repatriating the people uh, who survive and make it to these shores. Now, there doesn't seem to me to be uh, room for agreement there. Well, I think this is a problem at the moment with the European Union policy. They've forgotten that the basis, the foundation, in fact, of the Refugee Convention in 1951 was on the issue of international solidarity. So dealing with European refugees at that time and understanding that one state couldn't bear the responsibility for those refugees. And I think the situation is the same today. Uh, Europe is, is not looking great in terms of resettlement of Syrians. Uh, Germany has agreed to take 30,000. We've only taken 140 Syrians, whereas there are about three and a half million Syrian refugees being hosted in neighboring countries to Syria. So I think we do have to reflect on that and think about the obligations under the Refugee Convention and what international solidarity means. No one is saying that uh, individuals who are not found to be refugees, for example, shouldn't be returned. But anybody who is seeking asylum, who is a refugee, does need to have their case determined properly and offered protection within the European Union. And there can be greater responsibility sharing amongst European Union states as well. But the so problem a lot more is, can be done. The problem, as the politicians see it, we heard William Hague there, uh, is that if you give asylum to people in large numbers, they believe that will only encourage more people uh, to put their lives at risk to come to this country in the hope of getting asylum. Well, that's why I said you have to have a number of aspects to this. You deal with the search and rescue in the, in the current, in the immediate term, um, but you do look at the other aspects to this. So considering uh, what shipping companies are doing, they're currently rerouting, which is not helping the, the matter, looking at the issue of the unseaworthy the vessels, but also actually considering how we can assist uh, states within Africa in terms of migration flows as well. So there are a number of elements to this. But in the immediate term, of course, we have to carry out search and rescue. And we do have obligations for anybody who is seeking asylum to actually determine that. I think for, for many years, though, we, the European Union states have talked about this magnet, have talked about the pull factor. And in fact, if, if we look at statistics now, the United Kingdom, for example, is a, has only got about 25,000 asylum applicants per year. So I think they tend to exaggerate this problem in terms of numbers. If 200,000 and come with, you know, and, and as you mentioned, there are 500 million people within Europe. We really are not carrying a, a huge burden in terms of, of uh, people coming. And I think it is something that they can manage if they think about it properly and holistically. Okay, Dr. Stevens, thank you very much indeed for joining us.